Hello everyone, welcome back. In this session, we are going to learn about SSL pinning. SSL pinning is a technique that most application owners implement so that any request sent by the mobile application is not intercepted. SSL pinning is considered as the first and the most important step in the security mechanism of an application. But due to improper means, SSL pinning can be usually bypassed. So what exactly is SSL pinning? Let's first understand that. Let's say I have an e-commerce iOS application and my iOS e-commerce application should only communicate with my backend server. It should not communicate with any other backend server. So in order to implement this particular system, developers use SSL pinning. What does it do? Well, my iOS application is first going to send a hello message to the server. The server would be replying with the server certificate. That is the public key of the server. The iOS application is going to calculate that particular hash of the received public key. If the hash matches the hash that it already has, the iOS application already has, then and only then, all the requests are going to get to that particular application server. If the hash is not matching, all the requests are denied. So the iOS application is not going to send any further requests and it's going to display a message stating that this application is being intercepted or this application is communicating to a third party server. Now, why do application developers implement the system? We know that mobile applications can be reverse engineered very easily and they can be modified as well. The attackers can compile the modified applications and then send it to the victim. Now, the application owners do not want victim to connect to the attacker's controlled server and hence they implement SSL pinning. However, SSL pinning is not implemented properly in certain cases and that is the reason that is the reason SSL pinning bypass can happen. So SSL pinning bypass can happen using various methods. In this entire course, we are going to use three methods using which SSL pinning bypass is very simple and is very common to do. So the first method is SSL pinning bypass using Frida. So you can install Frida using the previous slide. All you have to do is then you have to check the app package ID using Frida-ps-ua and then you have to hook the Frida script, hook the Frida SSL pinning script that can be found inside this particular link. Do not worry, I have compiled all the Frida scripts into one and shared into my GitHub repo. I will be sharing that repo as well. Once the Frida script is hooked up inside your application, your SSL pinning might be bypassed. How does Frida work? Frida changes the response and runtime, similarly to what it used to do in jailbreak detection as well. So it's the similar thing. So it's the demo time and let's check out how you can bypass SSL pinning using Frida. So what I'm going to do is, since Frida is already installed with us, I'm going to download this particular script that is SSL pinning bypass script. And I'm going to copy the entire script and save it inside my device. Now this is the GitHub link which I was talking about. I have uh, compiled all the Frida scripts into this particular link that is called as awesome Frida scripts. You can use, you can view this particular GitHub repository. And over here, I have certain scripts for SSL pinning bypass, jailbreak detection bypass, etc. So you can simply download the entire script from here if you want to. I'm going to copy this script and I'm going to paste it inside my sublime text and I'm going to save this as SSL pinning.js. Remember, to always save it as SSL pinning. Uh, remember to always save it as JavaScript file. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to go inside desktop and I'm going to write the command frida-ps-ua in order to find the identifier. Since my application is not running currently, I'm going to open the application and now as you can see, it's running. Now I'm going to write frida-u. I'm going to give this identifier by dash f and I'm going to give the script using dash l. And the script which we are going to use is the one which we have saved as SSL pinning dash new. I'm just going to save this up and hit enter. Once I hit enter, you can see the Frida script has been hooked with my uh, with my application. I'm going to go into issues and network layer security issue. 
Now you can, I'm, I'm just going to enter any data over here and I'm going to send that data over HTTP connection or over HTTPS connection. Now in order to intercept the data, first what we have to do is we have to set up our burp suit. Now how can you set up your burp suit? We have already seen this in the previous videos. If you haven't watched the previous videos, I would recommend you to please watch the previous video. Over there I have, sh I have showed exactly how you can set up your burp suit and how you can set up your iOS device with your burp suit. And now what we are going to do over here is we are going to click on intercept on and I'm going to send the request over HTTP. So you can see the request has been sent over HTTP. You can see at the above that request to HTTP colon slash slash example dot com wherein your data is being sent. You can see all the data is being sent and it has been captured by our verb suit. Now one thing very important to note is only if and only if you are bypassing SSL pinning inside an application, inside an iOS application, only then you would be able to play with the request and the response that is being sent by the application. If you are not able to bypass SSL pinning, your application, if your application is not vulnerable to SSL pinning bypass, you cannot find any runtime related vulnerabilities in your application. In order to find runtime related vulnerabilities or, or vulnerabilities that purely depends on the request and the response, you have to bypass your SSL pinning. And hence SSL pinning implementation is considered as, considered as one of the most important steps inside any iOS application or inside any mobile application in general. So you can see we have captured the request and then we can play with the request and the response. Now I'm going to close the intercept and I'm going to send the request over HTTPS. Let me turn on the request again. And now, if, as you can see, we have now sent the request over HTTPS connection. So you can see uh, inside the inside the edit section that the request is being sent to HTTPS colon slash slash example dot com. So it's an HTTPS connection. Okay, let me turn the intercept off. And now let's turn it back on and send the certificate using certificate pinning. Now you can see there's a get request which is being sent. Let's turn it off and let's send it using public key pinning. And now again you can see it's an get request, another get request which is being sent. So in this way, we can bypass SSL pinning using Frida. I hope you understood what exactly SSL pinning is and I hope you understood the first method of bypassing SSL pinning using Frida. Thank you.